War. Huh? Good God, y'all. What is it good for? If you're a Marvel United fan, the answer is quite a lot. Let's get started. Welcome back, my friends. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Welcome back here to Digital Charcuterie, where we are covering the Marvel United Multiverse campaign with a whole bunch of gusto and excitement, because this, to me, is the most exciting board game pretty much ever made, and I'm just so happy that we're getting the season. And we've been covering the campaign and checking off names from my giant wish list of characters, which, free spoilers, we're going to be doing a lot of very soon. So at the risk of burying the lead, though, I like to do these, if you've been following along, just in chronological order, talking about all the great things that have been unlocked or announced or both. When last we left off, which was only like a couple of days ago and so much more has come out since then, we were on the cusp of unlocking Lilandra of the Shi'ar Empire. And I was really excited to see Lilandra because she was on my wish list. So let's go to the wish list right now. There's her big fat name in blue. We're gonna check it off with a big fat green mark. Oh, pow! Lalandra is in. That was a really nice way to kick off that day, was getting Lalandra as a character. Uh, she felt like she was one of the biggest missing X-Men pieces for me. The, her and Morph, really. Just growing up with that X-Men cartoon and the Sega Genesis game, that's really the only two X-Men things I had in my brain, and the trading cards. Lalandra just felt right, and I'm glad we unlocked her. And then Simon did something pretty cool that, even though I have no skin in this particular game, made me very happy. Because the following stretch goal was another set of team decks, which are just beautiful, colorful cards. We have only seen the front of one of them, so who only knows what the art is going to look like, but I just love the backs of these. They look great. And we got team decks that are different from the original ones because the original ones are all based around teams where the primary members of those teams could be found in retail boxes and core boxes. Boxes that are easily accessible to anyone and everyone. Makes total sense. Now we've got team decks where the team members are more niche or at least niche enough that they ended up being in Kickstarter-only boxes. So, with that on the table, Simon very wisely decided, well, there are two big, fat, giant promo boxes that a lot of people are missing out on. Let's make them available. And lo and behold, now you can buy the promos that you missed out on. If you watched the earlier video and you heard me talk about the Ghostbusters board game and how much I was bummed out that I didn't get to join in the fun of that campaign because I love Ghostbusters, that should give you an idea of how happy I am for the people who missed out on seasons one and two of this. I missed out on season one. I came in late to the game because I only saw like the core box of season one and I thought this looks fine but there's only like eight heroes or whatever. I, I want a game that's all of Marvel. Little did I know that's exactly what we were getting. I just didn't follow through on researching the rest of it. So when X-Men came out, when season two came out, I was looking at this campaign and I'm looking at everything that's in it. And as I scroll down to the bottom, I see everything from season one available as an optional buy. And there I was, boom. I went all in on that optional buy. I went almost all in on X-Men. There were three expansions I didn't get. And then here I am, a diehard Marvel United fan who is just in love with this game. And the fact that other people get to jump on the bandwagon late the way this guy did makes me really, really happy. That was a beautiful move of Simon. I know it was logistically tough for them, and I know they probably can't do that with the other expansions, like they said. I understand, even though that means I'll probably never get to own a Days of Future Past, that's fine because I have so much goodness to play with, and now there's all those toys being made available for other people. It's a win-win. And because of this edition, and because it's kind of a pricier edition, we zipped through the next few stretch goals pretty quickly. The next one was Havoc in his X-Factor uniform. Not gonna lie, didn't make me the most happy man on earth. And I know I'm not in the minority, but you know what? I'm never going to complain about this Havoc reskin, and I'll tell you why. Because the second I saw it, the first thing that came to my mind was my favorite Marvel United YouTuber all the way from Australia, the Meeple Monkey. And as soon as I saw Havoc with the X-Factor costume, all I could think of was, oh my God, the Meeple Monkey is going to love this. And sure enough, he made a video all about it, talking about, well, not all about it, but he made a video all about this game. And when he got to Havoc, you could tell that's a happy man 
Uh, if you haven't watched any of the Meeple Monkey, check him out. He's great. Just an awesome dude. Plays games, has fun. Great stuff. So we got Havoc in his X-Factor costume. Does not get me excited, but I know it gets somebody excited. At least one person. So I'm happy he exists. Now we got some character goodness. We got two ladies in the stretch goals, one after the other, that made this guy real excited. The first one would be Darkstar, another anti-hero whose name begins with Dark. And Darkstar gets me excited because she's a member of the Winter Guard. And if we see her, it stands to reason we're probably going to end up seeing the Red Guardian and Ursa Major and whoever else was on that team. I can't remember all their names. And it's funny because we haven't really heard whispers of any of that ever since. Like Darkstar came and she went and that was it. But they showed that she has a card that says Winter Guard on it and it has a certain effect, and it says any other heroes who have a Winter Guard card can use this effect. So that basically spells out for us, like, okay, Ursa Major's coming, Red Guardian is coming. I'm gonna get to kind of sort of play as David Harbour in this game. Then we zipped right through another stretch goal, which is six new superhero and supervillain cards. That's a mode I actually haven't tried because I am 99.9% .9 of the time a solo player, so I haven't had a bunch of people to try supervillain mode. And when I do get a bunch of people, we all just want to team up and beat up a bad guy. So we haven't tried the supervillain mode yet. That'll be something to come down the line, but we have more cards to add to that. And I'm curious to see what they add that is maybe unique to this set. Maybe it involves equipment, maybe it involves just multiverse characters, I don't know. But we've got some new cards. Elsa Bloodstone, finally a supernatural character. Again, we haven't seen this since day one with Black Knight, but Elsa Bloodstone has been announced and unlocked. And me, little old me, wrote her little old name on my little old list. There she is. Time to cross her off. The supernatural characters have been real slow and steady. I have a feeling that's going to change. I know a lot of people are clamoring for Morbius and Man-Thing as anti-heroes, which I am 100% on that train. But getting to see Elsa Bloodstone is really exciting because she is, to put it the way Obi-Wan Kenobi would, our first step into a larger world, a world of Man-Things and werewolves by night and Liliths and Jared Leto's. And after Elsa, it was all quiet on the Western Front for a little while, but as is the case with any Western front, eventually it's going to stop being quiet because war is going to roll in. And that's exactly what we got on Friday during the live stream with the creators. I did not think this was coming at all. I had no clue that Civil War was going to be a thing. But I saw in the chat a lot of people were dropping hints like, is this going to be a Civil War? Is this Civil War? I don't know where those people are getting their information, but they are on the ball because that's exactly what it was. So Civil War is going to be a thing. It's our next expansion box. And it comes with not one, but two new entirely PvP modes. One of them is a symmetrical mode, which I think they called Hero Clash Mode. I should have written that one down, I'm sorry. But it's symmetrical and it's just trying to get the most points. It's two teams of heroes akin to the blue team, gold team. There's a deck of cards that creates random events that shake things up. There's another deck of cards that populates the locations with people. On the other side of that mode, there is the registration Clash, which is asymmetrical, which involves the blue team, which is the anti-registration Captain America rebellious team, running around trying to be superheroes without being registered. Naughty naughty. And the red team, which is the pro-registration Iron Man authoritarian team, trying to throw the blue team in jail. So it's very thematic in that way. If you have read Civil War, you're pretty much going to get to play Civil War. Except no speedball, ironically. But with that being said, Let's talk about the characters in this Civil War box. In the red corner, you've got Iron Man, a Civil War version of Iron Man with a new sculpt and an updated deck. Wonder Man, who is a really cool character we have not seen yet, and he comes with these purple lightning effects. Again, like the stuff they're doing with X-Man and now him with the translucent plastic. My God, they have outdone themselves again this year with the figures. Tigra. Tigra is a beautiful sculpt. That tree she's climbing on looks great. And finally, Hank Pym as the Yellow Jacket. Plus, Civil War is going to be made available at retail, but if you're a Kickstarter backer, you get the promo character, the Iron Spider. Peter Parker in his Iron Spider suit. Uh, I 
just realized that this is the first time they've done this, this campaign, I think, except maybe Iron Lad with Galactus if that counts. And I remember this being a more common thing in previous seasons, if I'm not mistaken, so I'm curious if the next expansions are going to act the same way, if there will be retail expansions, but you get a little bonus character if you opt in now. But anyway, Red Team was cool, but the funny thing about Red Team is none of the members of Red Team were on my list. None of those new additions were on my list. Technically, I had Yellow Jacket on my list, but I had the villain version of Yellow Jacket, the Darren Cross version. I didn't even know that Hank Pym ever donned a Yellow Jacket suit. I thought he was just always either Ant-Man or Giant-Man, so shows what I know. So I can't cross him off because it's just not the same and that would feel like cheating. Meanwhile, though, in the blue corner, Captain America's team, led by Captain America himself, another new version with a new sculpt and new cards. Obviously, people were clamoring for better cards for the core heroes because, you know, in retrospect, their cards are not as good as the ones from season two, and I get that. And this new Captain America sculpt? My god. Give that sculptor an award right now. Give him 12,000 of these and an award and a raise. Joining Captain America on his rebellious team are Kate Bishop, Spectrum, and one very giant, almost sentinel-sized Goliath. Also, if you opt in now, you get the Kickstarter exclusive Hulkling, who looks wicked. He's got his wings going on there. He's got a big old sword. He's got item cards. One of them is the wedding rings because he's married to Wiccan. So what a cool item to add. To, I keep calling them items or equipment cards. What a cool equipment to add to this character. It's just all around Blue Team. I was on Blue Team's side in the comic and in the movie, and I'm still on their side because we've got these two ladies, Spectrum and Kate Bishop, who are both on my list. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and cross those off right now. Now that's more like it, crossing off some names. And I think, I could be wrong, but I think I also had Hulkling on my list, didn't I? Let's check the board. There he is. That's one more name off the list. This expansion looks pretty darn cool, and I'm happy to eat my words because if you'd have asked me five days ago if I would have wanted a Civil War expansion, my answer would have been no, no. I, I would much rather have expansions of other characters. Um, but seeing this, seeing the characters they put in it, seeing what they did with the reskins of Cap and Iron Man, and seeing what they did with the game in general, and adding these two brand new PvP modes. From a game design perspective, this is almost a perfect expansion. Like, considering what this game is and how it works and how you can alter it, I don't think it has ever been altered by an expansion more than it has with this. So bravo, Civil War, for doing something magnificent. And of course, being revealed prompted a whole lot of people to add it to their optional buys, which meant we unlocked Kid Loki. A lot of Young Avengers. They are clearly getting the whole Young Avengers roster out there. Kid Loki was one that I did not know existed at all. I thought he was just from the show. I didn't know that was a real thing. Definitely not one I would have put on the list, but definitely one that makes sense if you're a Young Avengers fan. So boom, Kid Loki is in. We zipped past right into the next stretch goal and unlocked Wiccan, Hulkling's husband, Scarlet Witch's son, Speed's brother. He has been a big missing piece this entire campaign. He's finally here. Now we got Wiccan. Now we got Speed. Now, you know what we need? You know what we need, Sima? You take these two characters. You take their parents. All we need is a villain, Agatha Harkness, and we can reenact WandaVision. Okay? But we can't do that without your help. So let's get that Agatha Harkness rolling, okay? And after comes, for me, the main event of this entire week. A piece I have been longing for since last year when I received my X-Men boxes and I saw all the characters I got and I thought about what other characters I would love to have. The Red Hulk was right near the top of that list. Not at the top, but he cracked like the top five for sure. And lo and behold, the Red Hulk is here. We just unlocked him in all his fiery red glory. And he's on my list. Of course he is. Of course he's on my list. It feels so good to check his name off, let me tell you. But it's going to take some getting used to because he's an anti-hero. I didn't, exp I thought he was just a straight up bad guy. That means his piece is not red. And that's really going to mess with my head because he's Red Hulk. I mean, I get it. Original Hulk is not green. He's blue. I just, I guess I thought it was so perfect to have Red Hulk 
be read. It's going to be kind of like that, you know, that quiz or that like sort of reflex test. I don't know what it is. It's a test you can take where like you look at a word and the word is the word green, but it's written in yellow font and you have to only say the color of the font and not what the word is itself. That's what it's going to be like to look at Red Hulk for the rest of my life and be like, that's purple. That's the, that's Red Hulk. I don't know if they have plans on doing Red She-Hulk. I hope they do. I really hope Red She-Hulk is just a straight up a-hole and she's evil and everybody hates her so that she can be read so that we don't have this problem a second time. I call it a problem. It's not a problem. It's just something that messes with my head because I'm so happy that Red Hulk is here. I never bought a lot of comics like ever in my life. I'm just not a person who buys a lot of comics, but I do own some and I happen to own comics where I own the debut issues of two Marvel characters. And those characters are Bob the Hydra agent and Red Hulk. So when Bob got unlocked, I thought, ooh, that's that's kind of cool. Bob, I know it. Like, I was there when he was born. And now the same goes for Red Hulk. I have that first issue where there's Red Hulk and A-Bomb fighting on the cover. And now I get to see him as a little mini. And hopefully that means we'll get to see A-Bomb in the very near future, too. I think he's a hero. So he'll be blue, which is... Great. It all matches now, finally. And as I record this, we are only like 9,000 away from unlocking the next stretch goal, which is a deck of team cards for the Young Avengers, which I'm actually shocked we don't have yet. We have so many team cards, I've sort of lost track of what each one of them is. From there, who knows what's next? And I just want to cap things off by asking you all your opinion, because we're not near the end of the campaign yet. We're probably not even two-thirds of the way there yet. I know looking at my list, there's still so much left to be unveiled. And I know looking at the comments on the Kickstarter that there are so many characters, some that I've never even heard of, that people are requesting. Now, obviously, Simon can't do everybody. They, they, said, they said we can't give everybody the characters they want. However, there are so many left. So many left in terms of just what fandom wants, that it leads me to wonder, is there enough left for a season four of Marvel United? And if not, how do we have our cake and eat it too, if that makes sense? How do we get these characters without another full Kickstarter campaign with a full new season of new content and new expansions? How do we do that? So I'm gonna pose that question to you guys and I'm going to try to come up with some kind of coherent answer myself. And off the top of my head, the only thing I can think of is this. The addition of the Civil War expansion gives me hope, lots of, lots of hope, please, please, that at some point during this campaign, we will get another expansion box that's all villains. Just a bunch of bad guys. Whether it's, I don't know, Masters of Evil, Thunderbolts I see as more an anti-hero box, whatever. Maybe like a second Sinister Six box. I've seen people ask for that. That would be glorious. But other than that, if we stay the course and we stay with just what Simon has planned for this campaign and nothing new to add to it, whatever's left over, is there enough for a season four or not? And the way I look at it is, let's say there's not enough for a season four. Let's say that they just can't feasibly launch a whole campaign and do all of this again because there's just not enough left for them to work with or what have you. Is it possible to do something like this, which is, let's say November, let's say this coming November, they post some kind of video or something where they say, okay, look, backers, Marvel United Multiverse backers, you know, your, your stuff is coming. It's still a few months out, but it's coming. In the meantime, though, we've decided that, you know, Marvel United is finished as it exists right now. There will be no more giant Kickstarters, three seasons, we're done with that. However, we will continue to add new content every now and then for people who want it as sort of a mini Kickstarter. I don't even know if that's a thing, but this is what I did. This was my train of thought. Spider-Man villains. That's the big thing for me right now. What Going into the campaign, the two big things for me were I want Spider-Man villains and I want Hulk characters. We've got a lot of Hulk characters so far. There, there's a little bit more they could throw our way. Spider-Man villains, though, we got Chameleon. We got one. There's definitely not enough room in this campaign for all the rest. What I did was I took Spider-Man, not just villains, but I took Spider-Man characters. I took the world of his characters that have not been represented in Marvel United yet. And I put them together into a box and I took them all together and I said, okay, there's enough here, not for a campaign, obviously, 
and too much for a expansion, but there's enough here for a box roughly the size of a stretch goal box. Would Simon ever entertain the idea of selling that? Maybe just as a Kickstarter thing, they say, you know, if you want to order this box, here it is. We can reveal slowly who's in it if you want that juicy Kickstarter suspense, but it's just this box. You have two weeks to back it if you want it, and then you'll get it whenever you get it. Because here's what I came up with. These are all the Spider-Man world characters that I could think of that were missing who could theoretically go in this box. In alphabetical order, they are Alistair Smythe and his Spider Slayers, Armored Spider-Man, the silver and black one, Cardiac, Carry-On, Doppelganger, Hammerhead, my man Hobgoblin, Hydro Man, the Jackal, the Jack-O-Lantern, Kane, Null, the Lizard, Madam Web, Molten Man, Morbius, Mr. Negative, Prowler, Puma, Scorpion, Shocker, Shriek, Silver Sable, Six-Armed Spider-Man, Spider-Carnage, Spider-Girl, Swarm, the Symbiotes, imagine the Symbiotes as a team, kind of like the Wrecking Crew, Tarantula, and Tombstone. Those are just the ones that I could think of. And I'm not even a guy who reads Spider-Man comics. I'm sure there's plenty more I missed. I'm sure there's people out there who are like, well, if you're going to have Kane, have Judas Traveler, have the Master Weaver, right? I'm, there's, like Andrea said, every character is somebody's favorite character. So I apologize if I left your favorite character off the list, but that's what, that's exactly 30 characters, actually. So way more than an expansion, but... The very first stretch goal box, the Marvel United stretch goal box, was, I think, 35 characters. Imagine a box like this. That's just Kickstarter exclusive Spider World box. There you go. Would something like that be able to exist? Could Simon do that in lieu of a whole other campaign? And I hope the answer is yes. Because talk about a great way of giving the people what they want while being cost effective about it. Now, I don't know, maybe this is completely not how it works. And maybe doing that would actually make Simon lose money as opposed to if they did a full campaign. I don't know, maybe I'm dumb. I don't understand how money works because I don't like it. But if that's something that could be done in lieu of a season four, I'm all for it. I would still be all for a season four as well, I'm sure, because there's so many characters that I don't know who keep popping up. So I'm sure there are plenty more. I'm struggling to wonder if that's what I would prefer. So let me know in the comments below what you think, if you think a season four is A, going to happen, if it's even feasible at this point, and B, if it does, if it's something you would want, or if you'd rather they kind of do this different thing with just bigger boxes of random characters to add to it instead. Let me know what you think about that. In the meantime, I hope you're all having fun keeping track of this campaign with me, and I will see you all here again for whatever comes next in the Master Plan.